So with that, we're, we're, we've, we're a little bit, uh, we're behind a little bit, but we'll be all right. We're heading into the part of the program where we actually share our personal favorites at this time. So we'll kick off with uh, the gentleman from Atlanta and his uh, can't miss opportunity. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, and I appreciate your confidence and can't miss. Since we're behind, I'll try and be quick. And actually, I'd planned to be pretty quick on, on TV. I figured we'd spend my time on the uh, challenge, which we did. Um, since this is a, a, the second month that I've done it, last month I did uh, go into some detail on what uh, Tiva Pharmaceuticals does. Essentially, you, you will recall they are a, um, a among the largest um, generic drug manufacturers in the world. They're also one of the top 15 uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, overall, uh, generics and uh, proprietary, and they do have about a third of their business from uh, what would otherwise be called proprietary drugs. Uh, it's run up in price a bit since uh, last month, uh, but the PAR has not uh, come down a whole lot uh, because it's still a, a good, uh, solid um, expectation of uh, growth and profitability going forward uh, the way so I figured what I would spend uh, my presentation time this month uh, doing is just showing you uh, how I came up with uh, selecting it again as you see Mark um, showed this um, portfolio I looked there saw that it was the highest green and pretty much uh, those in the uh, yellow above it um, I had various reasons for not uh, wanting to, to go with them. Uh, Jean Penn, just uh, not, um, although actually I have uh, also uh, bitten the pig and uh, owned some of it uh, personally. I wasn't uh, prepared to go with that. Cisco, um, we've picked uh, a number of times and, and thought uh, times. Uh, that was uh, enough uh, for it. Um, Bank of America, I wasn't looking for for uh, quality below 80 um, and uh, or excuse me financial strength below 80 quality um, I wanted to stick excellent so I didn't do that and Logitech uh, is certainly a an interesting possibility uh, as well but I decided to go with Tiva uh, once I made that out of our own pick I just said let's just make sure there's nothing else in the uh, manifest universe that might have the qualities that attract me to Tiva in specifics I was looking at financial strength of 90 with my par uh, down below 8 right now. I do like ratcheting up financial strength at least to 80, um, but Tiva's, as you can see, is 91. So I said I'm looking for a company um, that would be of higher overall and specific quality than Tiva. So I use 90 to screen for financial strength and also uh, earning stability. I think um, there is some merit. Um, in this time of tightening our quality standards to uh, include earning stability there. Again, more up straight and parallel um, in the tightening time. So I just uh, tossed in 70 for that criteria. And as you can see, um, Tiva ranked uh, third on that list, Cisco being the only company um, that I really was interested in. I'm uh, Aeropostale is a company I keep seeing on screens. Uh, I have to admit that I'm uh, still a little bit skeptical, though it has a good long-term record that uh, uh, clothing, can st especially clothing, is still a little too trend-oriented for my uh, personal taste. So uh, I again picked Tiva, but the arrows that you see on there were others that I looked at but disregarded. And uh, in the interest of keeping things simple, I uh, saw no need to uh, nitpick past uh, manifest numbers. I find them all uh, reasonable and uh, close to uh, my own personal numbers and a uh, par of 17.7 and a quality of 80 looks good to me. So there's my pick, doubling hey, down on good. TV. Uh, yeah. Cy, we're, we're getting the question that we got the last time you chose Teva. Uh, and I'm going to assume your answer will be the same, but I will ask the question again. <laughs> Are you at all concerned with the turmoil of the Middle East affecting the Israeli economy and its prospects, specifically this Israeli company? Uh, the, you're correct, Kim. My answer is the same as last month, and it's no. Uh, Teva is uh, headquartered in 
uh, Israel. However, the vast majority of its business is uh, done in North America and Europe. So I'm not concerned. Okay, anything else, Ken? I know we're clear on questions, okay. Mark. Well, thanks, Sai. And I would I would point out that you you know that we agreed with you after your last pick. Uh, Teva was featured as the the stock that was in the, the monthly newsletter just a couple of weeks ago. That, that's right. Uh, thank you, Mark, and uh, uh, that's good. And and I also uh, will mention that uh, I noticed your um, deep value screen that you just posted also had a Teva in there, which was a reinforcer. In yeah, it's going so. it's going to show up there also. Yeah. All right, Mr. McManus is uh, apparently climbing around in the trees in the Amazon rainforest or something, so I'm going to have to pinch hit for him for a minute. This is also a repeat selection. I believe he selected Bank of America, and it has performed fairly close to the market since the time of selection, and I think that's at least twice. Um, this is not a selection for the faint of heart. Now, many of us in the community have uh, not yet really forgiven uh, the financial services or any of the financial sector companies for what they put us through. Uh, you can see the extremely deep drop in the stock price back during that uh, all that financial chaos. That was no fun at all, no fun at all. But it it has recovered thanks to a, a, a lot of stuff, a lot of intervention and in various things. Um, you will notice that uh, that that I, I have basically removed all of these these years from the analysis because this is a basically a brand new company. It is now the combination of Bank of America, uh, Countrywide Financial, and Merrill Lynch. So you really can only look at the company as it formed in the middle of all that chaos and then start making your projections about what that might look like going forward. And again, Hugh's outlook on this, I can, I can sum it up pretty well. About a year ago when uh, BP was faced with that disaster, that nightmare down in the Gulf of Mexico, I know that uh, Hugh actually added some shares of BP at that time thinking that, uh, wow, it just, it just can't get any worse than this, and, you know, just kind of crossing your fingers. And uh, I think it kind of sees that situation here, too. I mean, the world is still a very nasty, turbulent thing for the, for the banks, and that's what's helping to hold the prices down at uh, relatively low levels, the return at, returns at relatively high levels. But he actually sees this company as, you know, fairly well managed, probably returning to some notion of historical return on equity levels. Um, I should mention that the, uh, when I prepare guides, I, I look at, uh, this is actually book value that we're plotting up here at the top, book value up at the top, earnings at the bottom. So the distance between these two lines would literally be the, the return on equity. And if, if this company actually returns to normal ROE, return on equity levels, I mean, it would be very natural for the earnings to be somewhere in this range. And uh, based on that is, is, is how you, you basically derive a a price for a company like Bank of America. Again, we're talking about a company that could grow at 7%, uh, could return to uh, you know fairly normal return on equity levels. It's obviously been uh, really a train wreck over the last couple of years. By the way, the uh, Bank of America used to routinely achieve 15 to 20% return on equity back in the pre pre chaos days. So it'd be natural to assume that it could. Uh, if they're well managed and fortunate uh, to get back into those type of levels. So again, those are the two magic numbers in the analysis. Um, it, it's still kind of a deep value opportunity with a projected, elevated projected return of, you know, close to 20%. But again, he's he's basically doubling down um, or tripling down, I guess, in this case. Um, we did throw a couple of other second opinions in there. Morningstar has a fair value of 18 versus the price today of 1146 so they have actually have a buy rating on the company um, standard and Poor's has a fair value in other words uh, you know a fair price to pay for today very close to the current price and that also probably is providing some of the downward or the restraining pressure on the company's stock price at this time uh, s and uh, has quite a bit of weight quite a bit of influence with something like that and uh, that's probably not helping at all so Hugh's selection for this month is to, again, make a, a repeat selection of Bank of America, and I'm sure he's got his Irish fingers uh, crossed a little bit on this one. Any questions or comments, Ken, at this point? 
Uh, no, we're clear, Mark. We can continue. Okay.